In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. So today we really pray for those, I mean the children that were martyred as the first witnesses there in Bethlehem. Uh, it's only recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, as we'll hear. Remember in Matthew's Gospel, uh, they, the Holy Family are already living in Bethlehem. There's no journey from Nazareth because they simply have already taken up residence there in Bethlehem and then they, they make their way after this event, uh, first into Egypt and then they make their way up to, to Nazareth uh, later on, a couple of years later. So uh, it's, a, you know, it's a different kind of story to the nativity scene that we have in the Gospel of Luke. But we also pray for, for all of those young ones who have died, all those uh, members of our families maybe who have who've died um, in miscarriages or in abortions. So we, we pray for, for all of those young children who have given their lives uh, to, um, to the Lord in, in, in a, a kind of way. Let's begin by acknowledging our own need for the healing and mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We worship our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whom the holy innocents confessed and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking, but by dying, grant we pray that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through a manner of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. John. This is what we have heard from Jesus Christ and the message that we are announcing to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. If we say that we are in union with God while we are living in darkness, we are lying because we are not living the truth. But if we live our lives in the light as he is in the light, we are in union with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sins. If we say we have no, sins in our, no sin in us, we are deceiving ourselves and refusing to admit the truth. But if we acknowledge our sins, then God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and purify us from everything that is wrong. To say that we have never sinned is to call God a liar and to show that his word is not in us. I am writing this, my children, to stop your sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our soul has escaped like a bird from the hunter's nest. If the Lord had not been on our side when men rose against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled. The 
Then would the waters have engulfed us, the torrents gone over us, over our heads would have swept the raging waters. Indeed, the snares had been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Alleluia, alleluia. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Magi had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape into Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod was dead. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi. And in Bethlehem and its surrounding districts, he had all the male children killed who were two years old or under, reckoning by the date he had been careful to ask the Magi. It was then that the words spoken through the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loudly lamenting. It was Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This account in the Gospel of Matthew is the only one that we have of this incident. And so it's, it's hard to, to verify it historically, given that there's just the one, uh, one historical or one account of it. It seems historical. It certainly fits with the, the character and the nature of, of Herod. We don't know the kinds of numbers that would have been involved, how big uh, Bethlehem was at that time, and how many children uh, would have been involved in this kind of, of uh, you know, terrible, heinous decree. But the, the horror of it certainly continues to be there. You know, just that sense of, of a man so caught up in fragility of his power that he acts in such a way. I mean, what kind of man would make that kind of decree to kill little children less than two years old? I mean, who would do that? And unfortunately, we, we've seen way too many incidences of that, either directly or too often in our own world, indirectly, through policies that have favoured you know, exploration or, or um, the, the exploitation of, of minerals or, or the exploitation of, of resources and knowing that the likely consequence of that will be children that uh, are sacrificed as a result of, of the poverty that will ensue. Our first readings uh, this, during this season of Christmas strike a little bit lighter kind of, of note and uh, I want to just to provide a bit of an introduction to this first letter of, of John. As I said, we, we have it uh, over the whole of this two-week period. And we don't know the author. It's a, a letter or a, um, really, it's a, a poetic um, sermon or a poetic discourse that uh, invites us into this reflection. It's anonymous, like so many other letters, but the language and style is, is certainly like the Gospel of John. So tradition has always assigned it to one of the letters of John. The second and third letters that are also assigned to John do have an inscription to the elder, and so we know that um, you know, we kind of lump them all, all together. And then the, the book of Revelation um, is also claimed to be written by another John, but we presume that's a different, uh, a different John than, than these, uh, the, the three letters that we have. So we had the introduction yesterday for the Feast of St. John, uh, which kind of provides the, the sense of, of calling us into this mystery 
And then there is a conclusion in the fifth chapter. But in between, we don't have so much a, a continuing, developing kind of treatise or thesis. It's more this sense of, of what in Jewish custom and tradition is known as amplification. So ideas, and it's the themes of light in this first section, and then the theme of love. And he continues to, to come back. It's like circling around a particular idea, repeating it, re uh, inviting us to reflect about what the nature of all of this is. The situation in the background of this is that there is a group who are denying that Jesus is the Messiah, that he came in the flesh, that he couldn't be the one that was the fulfillment of all of their hopes. And so John is wanting to set the record straight. He draws from the language of his gospel. He draws from those reflections, particularly in chapters 14 to 17, what we call the Last Supper discourse, where Jesus is there bringing all of his teaching into this beautiful poetic kind of um, alignment. And so this first letter is inviting us to reflect on what does it mean for Jesus to be the light of the world? What does it mean for us to be caught up in this? Because the author will, will talk about the, you know, the whole experience of, of we, and that's the group of the apostles that first experienced this, but then you. And remember, so often in the scriptures, we might read the you as personal, as individual, but it's always the collective you. It's always addressed to the whole community, the whole church. It's only as part of the church that any of this makes sense, that we're being invited into this experience and this encounter. And so as an elder, he's, he's writing to these children, inviting us to remember, you know, what did we first experience? What was the thing that we first encountered in our own innocence, you know, in our own sense of, of being caught up when we, you know, we weren't able to, to make those discernments between darkness and light. Again, themes that are so, um, so critical in the, the, the book of Genesis and the first story of creation, but also that John takes up in his gospel account. So for us to just to ponder how to be children of the light, how to live in this experience. We know that there is darkness in the world. We know that there's all these kinds of confusions that happen around us. So this invitation is to find reality, to find truth, as we simply let the light of God's love slowly do its work. You know, it's this process of this slow uh, conversion experience. It's not this, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes there's this remarkable event that happens and, and suddenly we, we are able to see with absolute clarity what's happening. But often in the Christian life, it is just this slow work of, of pondering these things, working through them, trying to work through our own experiences and doubts and questions and, and all those kinds of things in order to find our own place. And it's that that we're being invited into, to experience this gift of God who's calling us and inviting us to experience his grace and his light uh, today. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become a spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your devoted servants, and purify us as we faithfully serve these, your mysteries, by which you grant justification even to those who lack understanding. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second preface of Christmas. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For on the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The second. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the second mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Brian our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Turning to each other, let's share in the grace and peace of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, abundant salvation to your faithful as they receive your holy gifts on the feast day of these, your saints, who, though still unable to profess your Son in speech, were crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the God of all light the God who continues to invite us to experience his friendship. Be with you, to bless you, to protect you, to keep you safe, and allow you to share that light with those around you. And may the God of grace bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen.